Hi guys, and welcome to the 2012 Anniversary Edition of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary, Part 5. Now in the first four parts of this series, I had covered the early days of Skyrim modding, from its birth, through its childhood, and into its teenage years. We saw a lot of great mods coming out, we saw the mods evolving, improving, becoming more sophisticated, we saw more advanced modding tools coming out, and we saw our community grow and grow. And where we left it, in part 4, was with the release of Dawnguard, the first DLC. Everyone was excited about it. I was ready to go, ready to make videos, ready to play, ready to mod. And so it came as no great surprise to me that I happened to be on vacation when they decided to release it. The Dawn Guard. They think they can stop us. But we will find them. Unfortunately, the tyranny of the summer holiday was not to end for several days, and uh, as you can imagine, by the time I got home, I was pretty keyed up to play. So, the first video I made after the Dawnguard release was part 39, and I covered two mods. The first mod was not actually a Dawnguard mod, but was instead a, a mod called More Hotkeys Please SKSE Beta. And this was a really good mod for me because I was a spellcaster and those of you who have played spellcasters will know you end up wanting way more spells at your disposal than you have hotkeys. So you abuse your favourites menu quite a lot and it does, it sort of breaks up fights quite, quite badly. So this mod just lets you define a lot of hotkeys um, for all your spells or items etc. And it was actually quite advanced in that it could detect the difference between pressing a key and holding a key down, but you could also set up hotkeys for multiple key presses. So, for example, if you set up a hotkey for the Q key and another one for E, you could also have another hotkey, so to speak, if you pressed both of those. Um, and brilliant, absolutely brilliant mod. Now, it's no longer a relevant mod as in that the mod author has taken it out of beta and actually started a whole new page for the mod. So the, the link in this video was actually out of date. However, I mean, this one for me, if you're a spellcaster especially, still an absolutely brilliant mod. Just make sure you get the right link. I also covered a mod called Vampire Lords Can Loot and Activate and Open the Map with Werewolf. Uh, and this was pretty, pretty essential for me because I was going into Vampire Lord uh, mode and it was so annoying because you could not loot. So you'd constantly, you'd kill something and then you'd you have to change back from Vampire Lord to Human and loot and then go back into Vampire Lord and so on. And it was monumentally annoying. Um, so this one, this was a mod I used for quite some time until I actually found another mod that did a few other things and included this functionality. Um, I believe this mod also worked for werewolves, but I never experienced that myself. However, I think in my next playthrough I'm going to probably um, do the Companions quest, which means I'm going to be a werewolf, and this will almost certainly be a mod I look at again. So, part 40. Now, part 40 was very much a Dawn Guard um, video. It was specifically geared towards vampires. And obviously, people who weren't playing vampires probably felt a little left out. But hey, you know, it was Dawn Guard and I was playing a vampire lord. The first mod I covered was Better Vampires. Now, this is an overhaul of the entire vampire experience. It makes it a little bit more involved. It makes vampires a little bit more powerful, but also increases their weaknesses. So you, you sort of have to focus on being a vampire more. Um, and it's a really good mod, and it is still relevant today. Um, there is an alternative to this called Bellua Sanguinare Revisited, and it is 
they're not really compatible mods, you pick one or the other, and they are a little different. I will cover that later in this video, but they're both superb mods, and which you prefer is more a matter of taste than anything. Uh, so, but better vampires, just as relevant now as it was when I made the video. The second mod was Bat Travel Vampire Power for Dawn Guard. Now, <laughs> this was great. Because as you guys probably know by now, I'm not a big fan of fast travel because I think it breaks immersion. Unless I have a reason, i.e. I have a carriage um, or a teleport spell. And this was a type of teleport specific to vampires. And it would allow you to turn into a, a basically a cloud of bats and fly off towards, your, towards a city and essentially fast travel to that city. Um, and I loved this idea. I ended up not using it myself too much because I still felt it was a little too easy to fast travel. Um, but I definitely appreciated the, the concept here. But the other thing that uh, you got with this mod was the ability to turn into bats and then fly. Now this was, uh, to me, really interesting. You could turn into a cloud of bats and literally fly straight up. Um, adding flight to, to Skyrim, which is one of those things that is missing quite a lot. I mean, a lot of people comment on how they miss levitate, etc. Well, this gives vampires that ability, the ability to fly and levitate. Obviously, because Skyrim is designed without that in mind, it's a very, very powerful ability. It's a very powerful power. You, you can abuse it quite a lot. So, be warned, I consider this overpowered and not balanced, but it is very cool. And the last mod in that video was Predator Vision for Vampires. Now, um, the mod has now progressed and is actually given enhanced vision to werewolves and Khajiit, but at the time it was just for vampires. And full disclosure, this is a mod I made. I don't usually include my own mods in Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. I'm a tiny bit uncomfortable with that. Um, however, it just in doing a video about vampires, this mod just seemed really appropriate. Um, I think the vampires' night vision, the default one, is terrible. Um, I think night vision in Skyrim in general is terrible. But as a vampire, um, especially if you're using an overhaul mod that makes traveling in the daytime unpleasant, you travel a lot at night, and using night vision, the world looks horrible. And it makes Skyrim horrible, and I, and I didn't want to experience the game thinking everything looked horrible because I was using this awful night vision. So um, this mod added much better night vision and a useful type of sort of thermal vision um, that allowed you to hunt your prey down. Um, and um, as I said, the mod has expanded. It is now available for werewolves and Khajiit. And it's not just a power anymore. It has gone quite far now. You can now activate it using key presses as long as you have SKSE. So, and again, it's my mod, and of course, I am recommending it, um, but I still think this is a mod that is extremely relevant for anyone playing a vampire, or in fact, a werewolf. Um, and as I said, apparently people who play Khajiit enjoy it as well, because it's it just the night vision is a lot more pleasant to use. So, on to part 41. Now, part 41 was another vampire <laughs> video, definitely. Uh, really was almost an extension of part 40. Um, I covered another vampire overhaul, in this case, Belua Sanguinare Revisited, and this is also an exceptionally good uh, overhaul. Um, it had the same idea, basically, it adds power to the vampire. It also adds a lot of uh, weaknesses, sunlight, etc. It changes the way you feed, makes it a lot more interesting. Belua Sanguinardi, though, it's more demanding. Um, it definitely forces you to focus on being a vampire far more than the other overhaul, which in itself made you concentrate on being a vampire more than the vanilla game. It made being a vampire... I think a little bit more interesting, but also a little bit more difficult. Um, so you should be aware of that. And the weaknesses it added were very, well, they were not law friendly to Elder Scrolls, but they were very law friendly to um, European vampire law. Things like the weakness to holy symbols, a vampire's 
in, you know, inability to enter places without being invited. All of these things were incorporated as weaknesses, as things that caused you un to be uncomfortable, to take damage. And it was a very interesting concept. Um, which of the overhaul mods is best is completely and utterly a matter of pers personal taste. If you want a tough experience where you have a lot of weaknesses and you really, you know, your, the central point, uh, ex point to your existence is to survive as a vampire, probably Belua Sanguinari re Revisited. If you want something that makes being a vampire much more interesting than the vanilla game, but doesn't necessarily dominate your every waking moment in game, probably the, the vampire overhaul, the better vampires mod. Uh, but again, it really is, both of them are absolutely superb mods and you know I, I if I was to try and say uh, give a score between the two they're equal they're absolutely brilliant the both of them and the second mod I covered in that video was the open and lock spell mod uh, which essentially added uh, two spells that allowed you to open locks and close them now th this type of spell is included in a lot of overhauls for example Midas but I was using Fenderix at the time, and it, at the time, I'm not sure if that's true anymore, but it didn't have open spells. And I love being able to open uh, locks with open, because, I mean, it was something that was in Morrowind, it was in Oblivion. And I hate having to raise lockpick. Every time I use a lockpick to open something, I would end up gaining skill in it, and I didn't like that. Um, and unfortunately, I am one of these people who finds it very difficult to walk past a locked door. <laughs> so uh, the the option to either open it with magic or smash it open um, is fairly essential for me in most of these games, if I'm not playing a character that lockpicks. So still a great mod, still using this one actually. And so we move on to part 42. Now, a lot of people have been unhappy with me because in part 40 and 41, it had been vampires, vampires, and more vampires. And people wanted to see something for the Dawn Guard. Well, this video was all about crossbows. Um, and I actually covered four great mods. The first one was the Dragonbone Crossbow, which was, you know, I mean, it doesn't require much description. Um, it's a Crossbow made from dragon bones. Brilliant crossbow, really well done, the looks were nice. The second mod was actually the Daedric crossbow and it was by the same guy and was equally as superb. A lot larger though, um, I remember this one was a lot larger and a lot more intimidating, but still a great weapon. And the third mod was the Falmer crossbow. Now, this is still not a very endorsed mod, and I'm surprised by that because I think it's pretty cool. It's a very, it's a very interesting idea. It looks very uh, appropriate for the game. It looks like a Falmer weapon, um, and uh, but for some reason, not as popular. And and I'm very surprised by that because I think it's a great mod, great piece of work. This one. If you are looking for a crossbow that's just a little bit more interesting, a little different, go and check this one out. And lastly in that video was the Siege Crossbow Collection. Now this was um, a collection of Dwarven, of Dwemer crossbows, and they were massive, great big siege engine type things. Um, they were actually very similar in size to the a Daedric crossbow, but they fired these bolts which were immense. They were like, well, they were siege crossbow bolts. And <laughs> it definitely, definitely made you feel, you wanted to come out with a lot of, you know, Terminator lines, or uh, if you're a TF2 player, you wanted to, you wanted to shout, cry some more while shooting this thing. Um, it's, it was a very entertaining weapon. Now, part 43 was devoted to one mod, and this mod was Automatic Variants. And this is a great mod, really. This is, this is a mod that actually allows you to use textures from lots of different authors for the same creature. So, there are plenty of mods out there that do retextures for, for example, I don't know, uh, trolls. And so which one do you pick? Well, with this mod, you get to use all of them. In fact, a mod author could actually release 10 retextures um, and you can use all of those 10, plus 10 from another mod author. And what this mod does is it actually generates 
the, the texture, well not generates the texture, it applies which texture it's going to use when the creature spawns and it's completely random. So you get lots of different variations of the creatures. So as you can imagine, this definitely makes things a lot more interesting and the mod is still being developed. Um, there are, there are going to be coming things coming, for example, meshes and model variants. Um, so um, take tables. Why not have different textures for different tables? Um, you could have the same model, for example, but subtly different textures and it would make things look a lot more interesting. Um, and, and so on. So this mod hopefully will keep progressing and keep adding those little variations that, that will make things seem a little bit more immersive. Now, part 44, I covered some lesser known mods and I started with a mod called One-Handed Crossbow. And not surprisingly, it adds a crossbow that can be wielded in one hand. And you can either use a crossbow and a spell or two crossbows. Dead easy, great little mod. And the second mod in that video was Serana Secret. Now, this was a great mod if you play a vampire and you have Serana as a follower. Um, it does a lot of fairly interesting uh, things, actually. It changes a few things that she does, like sometimes she'll try and bite people, etc. But the biggest and most important change for me was when, when you change into Vampire Lord form, Serana does the same, um, which seems reasonable. And the last mod in that video was Portal, Dynamically Placed Teleportation. And if you've ever played Portal, you know exactly what this does. It creates um, two portals, a blue one and an orange one, and you walk into one and appear out of the other. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't say this was a spell that you're going to use in your plays as a real spell. Um, I don't think it's... Well, it's, it can be useful, actually. You can do some fairly crazy things with it, including killing some fairly important people. Um, but I would say this was more of a, a fun spell. This is the sort of spell you're going to use for fun when you're a little bored. And it is very entertaining. Um, the mod is still being developed, but I think there are just some technical weaknesses that he is never going to get past. He's never going to be able to make it exactly like Portal, the game, um, just due to the physics engine. Part 45. Now, part 45 was Dwemer Day 2. Um, and <laughs> if you remember back to the other Dwemer Day video, this was, as expected, a, a video devoted to Dwemer uh, mods. And there were two mods. The first was the Dwarven Dwemer Power Armor mod, which did exactly that. It created a set of Dwarven armor that was Power Armor. Um, it looked a little bit more... Um, powerful, a little tougher, um, and uh, it was very good. Um, it, exactly as you'd expect a sort of dwarven version of powered armor to look. Uh, but I also recovered the Space Viking Dwemer Exoskeleton mod because it had been upgraded with some new versions. But also, the powered armor and this exoskeleton really did fit each other beautifully. If you want to play a massive power armored type character in Skyrim, these two mods together, I'd say were essential. <laughs> they really are. And if you then mix them with some of the dwarven weapons, especially the dwarven siege engine crossbow thing, um, yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun with those mods. For part 46, I covered quite a few mods actually. Um, I recovered the Birds of Skyrim mod, um, but I did so because it was sort of appropriate to, uh, to talk about it with regards to other mods I covered in that video. Um, and the first of those mods was Skybirds, Airborne Perching Birds. And this was essentially a mod that added birds that flew around Skyrim and would actually land on things. And it's a great mod, really does help, really does add to the immersion and it, I don't know, it makes the Skyrim sky a little bit more interesting. There are some, there were some glitches and there were some small issues. You could see birds ramming into walls or ramming through walls, but still an absolutely brilliant mod. And it was perfectly compatible with the Birds of Skyrim mod that put birds on the floor. 
Um, there was also a mod I covered called Birds and Flocks, and that just added more instances of those flocks of birds that you see um, getting startled and then flying off into the distance. Um, and that was a kind of nice addition as well. And again, completely compatible with Birds of Skyrim and Sky Birds. That video also covered a mod called Player Head Tracking. And this is another one of those mods that serves no purpose whatsoever other than immersion. It helps drag you into the game. And it does it by, whenever you're walking anywhere, if people are talking, especially if they're talking to you or they're close by to you, you start to look at them, your head tracks towards them. Rather than just walking, looking forward without glancing at anyone, you sort of look around and it makes your character look interested in the world around him. Um, and that really does help with immersion quite a lot. Obviously, if you're playing a character that's a little aloof and doesn't want to look at people, perhaps he thinks they're beneath him, then this might not be a mod for you. But generally speaking, this is a great mod um, if you just love being dragged into Skyrim. And lastly, I covered a mod called Skill Interface Retexture. And it's essentially a retexture of the skill menu when you open up your perks. It's far higher definition, looks a lot nicer. It makes the pathways between the perks look great. Just for no, I mean, it's, it's, it's no problem using this because even though it's very high definition, um, usually you do not have performance issues looking at that menu. Nothing's going on, so there's no reason not to use this. This is, this is one that will stay in my, my load order forever. Now for part 47, I covered six mods all by the same author, and all of these mods were the Amidian Born Retexture series. And these mods, they retextured a lot of the fairly normal vanilla armors, the ones that you get relatively easily, leather armor, Iron and Banded Armour, Steel Armour, Steel Plate, Dwarven Armour and Elven Armour. Um, these are very high definition retextures, very nice, very detailed, generally make all of these armours look a lot better. And seeing as these are armours you see a lot, because they are very typical armours in Skyrim, it really does make a big difference to how the game looks. Now this mod author actually compiled all of these mods into one compilation mod. I covered that in the Encore video for this because he did it fairly soon after I covered these. So that is the actual mod I would recommend. Um, there's no reason to pick, unless you've got one or two mods that you pr prefer another retexture, um, or if it's just one mod you want the retexture on and the rest you don't care for. Generally, there's no reason to not take the compilation mod. For part 48, I covered Airships. Two mods, essentially, the, that added airships to Skyrim, and I mean flyable airships. Now, the first mod was the Dwemer Skyship Fully Flyable mod, and it essentially adds a great big floating ship, very dwarven style, um, and you can, you can steer it around the skies of Skyrim. Really well done mod. There were actually two versions of it, one that looked more like a sort of large Viking longboat and another that looked like a Dwemer ship. The second mod I covered was one called Airship Dev Aversa and this is the same concept but with a slightly different model. Instead of a ship that looks like it's floating via magic, this is a ship that actually looks like a hot air balloon, an airship. It has a great big sort of hot air balloon above it and it's hanging from that. Um, so it looks Slightly more believable, I suppose, um, it, like it doesn't require magic to work. The details on this ship are great, it looks superb, but it also acts as a player home. This is something that really did attract me to this mod. You can actually, you can use a trapdoor and you end up inside the airship and you have a very small but very functional player home. And of course, it's a player home, you fly around with you. I mean, it's great, you can fly it from one city to the next, hop off, but you've got your home with you. Absolutely superb idea. For part 49, we had three mods, and the first was a great mod called Blaze of Eventide. And this is another mod that allows you to summon uh, a horse, in this case, a flaming horse. 
But what I really liked about this mod and this horse was the fact that when you ran around on your flaming horse, you left flaming footprints behind you, which was a great little addition. So, I mean, this mod this mod is really well endorsed, very popular, and rightfully so. It's a great looking horse, and little details like flaming fiery footprints just make all the difference. And the second mod was an armor mod, the Nordic Ranger outfit, which is really nice. It's, again, very law friendly, suits Skyrim perfectly, um, and but it is it's a, a mix of existing armors, as are a lot of the the armors you find in game actually. And the third mod was the Ritual Armor of Boethia. Now I loved this mod. Um, it is a set of armor that you can craft after finishing the Boethia quest, and it looks terrifying. It's really well done. The details are superb. The textures are amazing. The stats are great as well. Um, and the fact that you have to go through the quest to get it, superb. This is probably, of all the armor mods I've ever seen, one of my favorite, if not my favorite. Um, I think it's an absolutely superb armor set. Obviously, it's for evil characters. It looks evil. It just is. I mean, you've got to do the Boethia quest, and for those of you who don't know, spoiler alert, you really do have to be fairly evil to do that quest. Uh, great armor, great mod, still relevant. I mean, this this video was only done uh, several weeks ago anyway, so this is not an old mod. Uh, brilliant mod. Cannot say, cannot say enough about it. Definitely. Evil character, especially if you like light armor, this mod, superb. And so we come to part 50, the last video in the series, uh, the last video of the first year of Skyrim's life. And in this video, I covered two player homes. The first one was the Halls of Dovendor. And this is a massively impressive player home that is situated in Sovngarde. It is immense, castle-sized, maybe even city-sized. It has lots of areas, lots of very, very interesting, very impressive areas um, from this museum-like storage place where you could store all your treasure um, to vaults. Uh, the bedrooms were weird but brilliant. Uh, just an incredible player home. The only thing I found wrong with it was I couldn't bring my followers, which was unfortunate because it's so massive you could probably do with 30 or 40 followers just to make it look populated. And finally, the last mod I covered, the last mod I have covered in my Mod Sanctuary series, the Hunter's Cabin of Riverwood, by the same author as the previous mod actually. And this, well, I really liked this mod. It was a player's home, but it was in many ways the opposite of the last mod. It's very believable, very modest, situated in a place you meet, you come to very early on in the game. A little cabin set above Riverwood with a great view. Very functional home, not difficult to get to. There's a, there's a little bit of a quest to, um, to get the key, but generally something you can have from the start of the game and use as a, as a decent player home. And there is something, there is something deeply satisfying about this home, especially when you're extremely high level. If you've, if you've got a player, a character that has done many of the major quests, is you know probably rich beyond most people's wildest dreams, to just come back here and sit on the porch and look out in relative peace and quiet over the area where it all began. There is something about standing on that porch that makes you think, I'm going to do a new playthrough because I want to start again and experience this great game all over. Oh,